Hey there! Today I'd like to talk about one pen. I've already talked about the Pilot 78G. And the reason I want to talk about this again, I've already done a full-blown review. But what I would like to show you today is how to convert this pen to an eyedropper-filled pen. Now, for those of you not familiar with that term, it means, quite simply, that you take the pen, and instead of using the converter or cartridges that came with it, you fill the barrel with ink from a bottle and, of course, an eyedropper, and the name. The, um, the nice thing about that is that you would carry a much larger ink capacity than you would ever carry in a converter. This might be, well, a milliliter, um, I don't know. This is m probably multiple milliliters, so, you know, it could be useful. If you want to use this pen for extensive note-taking, for example, you can do that. I'm going to show you how to do it. Uh, I'd just like to point out that this is slightly um, dangerous, not because it will do anything to your pen. Your pen should be fine as long as there are no metal parts in the barrel or in the uh, grip section or in the feed. Um, so don't try this with an all-metal pen. Some people do it, but it, you know, the metal may actually rust. In this case, it's just plastic. The only thing that's slightly dangerous about it is that you have this much ink in there. And if you accidentally unscrew it, or if it starts to leak, there will be a lot of ink. Um, that's all. So, if you're careful, I don't think that should happen. I just want to point that out. Furthermore, just to be sure, you're doing this at your own risk. I've done this, I've been using the pen for two days as an eyedropper converted pen, without a single problem, without a single bit of leaking or whatever, but it's just a disclaimer. Okay, enough talk. Let's show you how to do this, okay? And then um, I'll see you later. Bye bye. Okay, eyedropper conversion of the Pilot 78G. Now, uh, y you can use this procedure on a number of pens, but not every pen. So, I'd just like to make clear that it's, it's your responsibility. If you want to try this and it doesn't work out, please don't blame me. Uh, what you would like to have is a pen that has a body that is entirely made of plastic, which is the case with this pen. As you can see, the entire barrel is plastic. It's plastic on the inside, no metal parts that could rust from the ink. The section is all plastic. It's plastic on the inside. It looks, looks inky. That's because I haven't cleaned it. I had already converted it to eyedropper. Uh, so that's pretty much it. I think if you have an old plastic pen, you can probably convert it to eyedropper, but again, it's your responsibility. I'm just going to show you that with this pen, something nice about this pen, it has this long sort of tube thing going on there, which is very useful if you do an eyedropper conversion, because this, you can smear uh, silicon grease on that, we'll come back in a, to that in a second, uh, and that's an extra buffer to make sure the ink doesn't flow out from the seal between the section and the barrel. Okay. So, what are you going to need? Well, you're actually going to have to buy some stuff if you don't own it, if you're going to do an eyedropper conversion. First of all, you need a pen, clearly. Secondly, a bottle of ink. This is Parker Quink. I don't like this ink that much, which is why I use it, because I have a large bottle of it, and I have to get rid of it. An eyedropper is kind of useful when you're doing an eyedropper conversion. You could also use an ink syringe, by the way. Uh, you're going to need some silicon grease. This is from the Goulet Pen Company. I'm not affiliated with them, but uh, this is good stuff and it's pretty cheap. And in this case, I would recommend using a rubber O-ring, which you can also buy from the Goulet Pen Company. And this together is less than $5, I think. You can buy a packet of four of these for, I think, $2 or something, maybe even $1. And this is a price like that, too, two fifty or something. And this will last a long time. And I'm serious about this. If you're halfway serious about fountain pens, get this. You can use it in a lot of different ways. Okay, so what are we going to do? Well, the basic uh, process is fairly simple. We're going to unscrew the pen. Put away the section. Don't need it for now. You're going to fill up the barrel with ink. Now, what I always do is I take a heavy plastic container. This is really heavy. I think this weighs about 200 grams or something. 
I put it down, put on a bit of tape, and I tape the barrel in place. That way, it's easy to fill. This is heavy, it's not going to move, and I can fill the barrel with ink without this actually falling over or getting ink in my fingers because I, you know, I'm not holding the barrel. Okay, I open up the bottle of ink, I use my eyedropper, this came with the Visconti Traveling Inkwell and it's the best eyedropper I've ever used because it has a huge capacity. See that? In one go it drew up this much ink, which I've never seen. Okay, you're going to drop that in the barrel of the pen a number of times, and at some point you will have enough ink in there. Now, the threads, there are threads on the inside, which is, you know, what, what this will screw into, stay below the threads. So I would say in this case, because we always, we also have this extended tube, it's, it, when it's in place it screws on there something like this, so I would go up to about this level of ink. You know, just to be safe. Don't go all the way up there. Definitely don't go all the way up there. Stay a little under the edge of this. So I would say about that. Okay. I can't really see. Let's get a bit of light. There we go. It can still take a bit more ink, I think. But not that much. Okay, so that's, I'm going to leave it at that for now. As you can see, I just leave the uh, eyedropper in the bottle. I'll clean it later. That's what is the first part of what we have to do. For now, this part is done. What I always do, just to be sure, is I take a bit of toilet paper, you can use any type of tissue, and just put it in there. Gently rub it around, rub it around the edges of the barrel so that you draw out excess ink. That way your threads are not automatically immediately covered with ink. Just a safety precaution. Okay, now I'm going to do two things. I'm going to take my rubber o-ring and I'm going to slide it along the section here. In this pan it's very easy because there happens to be a little bit of space between the end of the actual section and the threads. There is a little bit of open space, so this o-ring pretty much clicks in place, if you will. Then I take my silicon grease. Now with the silicon grease you don't want to overdo it, but you don't want to underdo it either. So this is trial and error. I put a bit in my finger, I'm going to rub it on the threads, and I'm especially going to rub it on there. You don't I mean, don't cover it in a thick layer of the stuff, that's really not necessary, but you don't want to underdo it either. So I, here I go, I just turn it around a bit between my fingers, I find that the most pleasant way to do this. There we go. You see, it, it gets a little shiny. Looks good to me. Now, one thing is very important. Don't ever, ever, ever put silicon grease on the nib or on the feed. I'm just explaining that for you people to whom this is entirely new. Why do you do this? You put the silicon grease there to make sure the ink doesn't run you know, over here and then gets out from between the seal of the section and the barrel. If that happens, you will stain your hands, whatever clothing you're wearing, etc. So, this is a buffer against the ink. If I put this stuff on there, and just to make sure, this doesn't interfere with the ink. Silicon grease is very neutral, especially if you get the good stuff, for example, from the Goulet people. Um, if you put it on the nib or the feed, you actu actually explicitly interfere with the ink flow, so you really, really don't want that to happen. For the same reason, do not use your ink cloth to wipe your fingers, right? Because then, the next time you wipe off your nib with the cloth, you're going to rub silicon grease all over your nib. So, I got a bit of my finger, I take the bit of toilet paper I had earlier, which is really absorbent, which is good, I clean off my fingers, and there we go. Alright, even so, I'm still not touching the nib with these fingers for now. So, I carefully take the section, you see the o-ring is an extra buffer against any uh, ink excess, excess, I mean like 
excessive ink, you get what I mean. I put it in here carefully, and I screw it in place. Not too tightly. You don't want to push out the rubber o-ring, which happens if you apply too much pressure. Then it pops off and just crawls up there. You don't want that to happen. So this is good enough. Now there's one issue, and the issue is that uh, usually when I would have used the converter that came with the pen, I would have dipped the pen in the ink, I would have sucked up the ink with the converter, and the feed would have been saturated, and right now it is not. So I have to get the ink into the feed and, you know, so that I can write. I'm just getting a bit of paper out here so that I can test it, because right now, if I'm going to try and write, it works straight away. And the reason for that is I previously added inked up, which you didn't know. Now, how to get the ink flowing? Well, one, th one way to do it is to shake it around like this a little bit. Carefully you don't hit the nib on a hard surface, of course. Um, that's one way to do it. Don't shake too hard, because, as you can see there, ink will fly out. You don't want that to happen. Another thing you can do is just tap the back. Hold the pen entirely vertically, like this. I can't really show you, but hold it vertically, so not like this, but like that, and tap the end of the pen while you're holding it. You can picture what I'm doing, right? That way, drops of ink will go down into the feed, and there you go. Then, the pen should write, which is the case here. So now, I have a pen that holds this much ink, and not this much. And believe me, this is significantly more than that. And as you can see, there's no problem. The pen writes well. Good thing about the quink, it is, you know, a simple, good, nice ink. I just don't like the color that much. Personal preference, of course. Okay, so I think this should be safe. You have the silicon grease, you have the O-ring buffer, and that's it. But even so, be a little careful. Don't accidentally unscrew it. Even if it's just a bit, ink may flow out. So be careful. Please be careful when you take this anywhere. I just want to add that disclaimer. Apart from that, you know, have fun. You can do the same thing I've just shown you with a Platinum Preppy. I have done this with a Pilot Petit 1. That wasn't too great a success because it started to leak at some point, but most all plastic pens you can do this with. So have some fun, try it out, be careful, but you know, it can be fun to try and do this. So that's all I got today, so I hope this was useful. I thank you for watching, and um, I'll see you later. Bye-bye.